Hello and welcome to the channel. This video is a nested loop. A nested loop is nothing but a for loop inside a for loop. So when we have a first block of code, we want to run a predefined pre number of times. And the second block of code within that code, which we want to run another predefined number of times. We use a for loop inside another for loop, which is commonly known as a nested loop. For example, say that you want to work on a list of lists. In Python, we can use nested loop to iterate through the, an iterable object within another iterable object. Let's take an example of the table we created using for loop over a range function. So the code was something like this. What was happening here was we had one sequence and that sequence was range data type and the sequence had elements one through 10. And for item in, in that sequence, we were printing two times the item. So basically this was printing multiplication table of two. Again, when we run this, we get a clean table of multiplication of two. But what if we needed similar table for a multiple numbers? So let's say instead of just printing table uh, or multiplication table of two, we wanted to print similar table for numbers one, two, and three as well. Well, for that, we need to run this bit of code in, inside a for loop, which will be nested inside another for loop. To make that happen, I want another I want to define another range before this, and that would be my, it could be any anything as name, but let's say my values equals range. I want to run this one from one to four so that I get one, two, and three as my values here. And then instead of running 10 on this range, let's say I want to stop at six and say for x in, my values, I want to run this for loop and instead of item, I would say y in my sequence. So for x in my values, I'm looping x through all the items in my values, which is one, two, and three. Um, I'm then inside that I'm looping y in each item of my sequence which is one two three and five and then at this point i'm printing instead of this i would say instead of always two i would say print x times y instead of item because we changed item to say y and we would say equals to, now instead of two times item, I would say x times y here. Printing multiplication tables. <laughs> now when I run this, I get table of one, another table of two, and then another table of three. And each of these tables are looping through values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now let's go to a flowchart and, and try to see what's happening here. Well, if you recall, this was the flowchart that we had without, uh, without a nested for loop. We only had one uh, decision to make here and run the statement uh, in, for each iteration. Uh, and our multiplier was always two. But in this new case, our multiplier is also dynamic. So we are changing our multiplier from one, two, and three. And then our sequence to multiply would range from one, two, three, four, and five. So we could think of that as our two dimensional table instead of one dimensional table in our previous example. The X value would run from one, two, and three, and the Y value would run from one, and end at five with these range functions. And for x in my value, which is one, I, I go in here for each item x in my first sequence. So basically here I'm looking at outer for loop and then inner for loop. So in the outer for loop for x in my values, I'm taking the first value for each item x. So the first value is one. For that one, now I go to the inner loop. And for each item, y in the second sequence. The second sequence first item is also one. So for one here in my outer loop and for one in my inner loop, I run the statement, which is one times one and the output would be one. 
And after that statement, it goes back into the inner loop or the nested loop and increments the value for the next item in the sequence. And the next item in the sequence is value two for y. So the statement would be one times the two, and the output would be two. And similarly, it goes back into the loop each time the new value comes in. When the value reaches four, the item four in this outer loop has still a value of one. So one times four, the statement would print out four, and it goes back into the loop and takes value five, and then it prints out five, which is one times five. The statement output would be five here. And when it tries to go back into the loop, it, it recognizes that the last item has reached for y, and now it becomes true, and the flow goes over to the outer loop. And the next item x in the, in the outer loop, or the, on the first sequence, comes in, which is now two. And for that two, it loops um, into the inner loop. And now for the inner loop, the value iterates again, starting from one to five. So what's happening is the outer loop stays two while the inner loop um, iterates from one to five. And this statement executes with the output two times one, two times two, two times three, two times four, and two times five to give us the, the result as shown in the second row here, two, four, six, eight, and 10. And after this, um, this statement becomes true and the flow goes over to the outer loop and the next item comes in, which is three. And again, this iterates again for, e for, the, for the three in the outer loop, the inner loop iterates from one through five. And therefore, three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is 12, and three times five is 15 um, are, the, uh, are the output from the statements executed in, in that loop. And when that ends, it goes back into the true flow. And here, when it goes here, it checks, the, the, uh, it, it checks whether the last item has been reached. In this case, three has already been executed, so it goes out to the true flow and the program exits at that point. So in this way, we could think of nested for loop as two dimensional table where my, my outer loop is iterating over first dimension and my nested for loop or inner for loop is iterating over another dimension. And, and my statement is running each time for each x and each y iteratively. So I hope that bit of explanation um, took you a long way towards understanding what is happening inside this nested for loop and why we are getting similar uh, our output like this when we run that code. I hope you like the video. Um, please subscribe and share. Also add your comments on what you like and what you don't like. Also what you would like to see in future. Until next time, thank you.